Today we're moving on with volume of a prism. So there's three formulas here at the top of the page. To find the volume of a rectangular prism, which looks like this shape here, we will be given three numbers, the length, the breadth and the height. To find the volume, all you need to do is to times those three things together using this formula, V equals LVH. To find the volume of a cube, a cube looks like this where all the sides are the same length and we're going to call the length of that side L. So the formula for the volume of a cube is really V equals L cubed. You can use the formula for a rectangular prism for a cube, it just means it will be the same number multiplied together three times. The third formula that you need to know is the formula for the volume of any prism. It can be a rectangular prism, it could be a triangular prism, it could be a trapezoidal prism. Whatever type of prism it is, to find its volume you use the formula V equals AH, where the A is the area of the base of the shape. So if it's a triangle base, you'd find the area of a triangle. If it's a trapezium base, you find the area of a trapezium. And it would just change depending on what type of prism you have. Okay, the next thing here for you to look at is your volume conversions. So we've done one of these for length, we've done one for area, and here it is again for volume. So millimetres cubed, centimetres cubed, metres cubed and kilometres cubed are the units that we use for measuring volume. To convert between them we're used to seeing this 10, 100, 1000 but when it's volume we have the powers of 3 on them. So dividing by 10 cubed, dividing by 100 cubed, dividing by 1000 cubed and timesing if we're going in the other direction. <coughs> Now volume measures how much space is inside a three-dimensional shape, the volume, how much it takes to fill it up. Now often when you want to find the volume of something, you might actually be talking about a liquid, how much water can a tank hold, for example. So sometimes it is important to be able to change our millimetres cubed and centimetres cubed into capacity units such as litres and me millilitres or megalitres, kilolitres, so that we can find out how much volume it would be in liquid units. So there's a few different things here listed. I find the easiest ones to remember is just to remember that a centimetre cubed is the same as a millilitre. So if you have anything measured in centimetres cubed, it's exactly the same as millilitres. And the other one that I like to remember is that a metre cubed is exactly the same as a kilolitre. And if you need to know any other conversions from there, then you can convert your units using this little diagram on the side. So if I had millilitres, litres and kilolitres, they all work in thousands. So if I converted my centimetres cubed to millilitres cubed, I could easily convert that to litres if I wanted to by dividing by a thousand. Okay, so please make sure you add this diagram onto your booklet. All right, so here we go with the examples. Example number one, find the volume of each of the following. Now, if it's a rectangular prism, you write down the rectangular prism formula. So this one is a rectangular prism. The formula is V equals L, B, H. So the L, the B, and the H are the three different dimensions of the rectangular prism, the length, the breadth, and the height. Now, this one has more than three numbers on it. That's because some of them have been written twice. So let's have a look. If 6 is the length that way, 6 would be the height going that way, 6 length and breadth. And then vert going up from there, we would have a height of 4. Okay, so they would be the three measurements that we would need to use, 6, 6 and 4. It doesn't matter the order that you times them in. I'm going to go 4 times 6 times 6. 
okay? So I want you to write down the formula. I want you to do a second line, which is subbing in the numbers. And the third line is when you use your calculator and you work out what the answer is. Four times six times six is 144. This is measured in kilometers and because it's volume, they will be cubed. Question two is also a rectangular prism. So the formula is V equals LBH. So let's have a look. If I look at this um, rectangle on the bottom, it has six and 10 as the side lengths. The height going up from there is the 12. So they are the three dimensions that I'm going to use. Subbing those into the formula, in any order, six times 10 times 12, it's my second line, and the third line is the calculator. 6 times 10 times 12 means that the volume is 720. This time it is meters cubed for my units. Okay, so that's rectangular prisms. Then we progress to some other types of prisms. Question 3, you can see that we've got a triangle on the front here of this shape. So remember, for any other type of prism, we need to use the formula V is equal to AH. Now, A stands for the area of that shape that's on the front, that triangle. So what I want you to do is instead of the A, I want you to write down the formula for a triangle. So the triangle has a formula, half base times height. Okay, that is what this A has become. A is half base times height. To find the volume, I still need to times that by this H that's in the formula. Now, because I've already got a H in my triangle, I might just write that down as a capital H just so it looks different because it's a different height. <coughs> All right, so now I want to substitute into that formula. For my triangle, half base times height. My triangle has a base. Remember the base and the height are joined by the right angle. So the right angle is here. It would be six and eight would be the base and the height of that triangle. So half times six times eight tells me the area of my triangle. The capital H that I've used there stands for this height going backwards from that triangle, or maybe it's better to see this one here because you can see the five that is on that side. So I would be timesing by five for the height of my prism. Okay, third line is, or actually, actually the fourth line since I needed to change my formula, sub or type that into your calculator. Half times six times eight times by the five. You don't need the brackets since everything is multiplied together. So that is 120 kilometers cubed. Question four, also a prism. This one has a trapezium on the front. So our formula for any prism is V equals AH. But we replace the A with the formula that we have for the shape that is on the front. And in this case, it's a trapezium. The formula for a trapezium is H over 2, bracket A plus B. So I might get rid of that first bracket because too many brackets will get confusing. So that's the formula for my trapezium. I then need to times that by the height going away from that trapezium, which I will call capital H. Okay, so then subbing in to my trapezium formula. For the trapezium, the A and the B are the two parallel sides. See the little red arrows? The three kilometers would be the shorter one. The longer one will be the six kilometers. And the, the H for the height between them is this perpendicular line here, which is 2.6 kilometers. All right, so subbing in. 2.6 for the height over two bracket a and b is the three and the six it doesn't matter if you go six plus three or three plus six doesn't matter the order okay that's the trapezium 
And then I just want to times that by the height of my prism, which is this length here going backwards from the prism there, which is going to be 8 kilometres, 8. Type that all into your calculator, 2.6 over 2. You'll probably need a time sign there, bracket, 3 plus 6, close bracket, and I want to times that by 8. So 93.6 kilometres cubed. All right, question five. Have a think about it. What kind of prism is that? We're back to a rectangular prism. So the rectangular prism has its own special formula, V equals LBH. Try looking at one of the rectangles first. So if I look at this one here on the side, it has 11 times 9 would be the dimensions of that rectangle. And then I want the distance going back, which would be the 10. They are the three dimensions that I want. So times them together in any order, 9 times 11 times 10. And we get our answer, 9 times 11 times 10, 990 kilometers cubed. Question six, you can see this triangle on the front. So we have ourselves a triangular prism. So we know we need our prism formula, which is V equals AH. The area of the shape on the front is a triangle. So we're going to replace that A with half base times height. Plus we will need to times that by the height going backwards for the H in our formula. So substituting in for the triangle, the base and the height, not this 10. The 10 is not attached to the right angle. We want the right, the two sides that join the right angle together. So even though it looks a bit funny, it's actually the 8 and the 6, which is the base and the height of that triangle. So half times 8 times 6, that's the triangle. Then we want to times by the height going back of that prism, which will be the 10 in the calculator. Half times 8 times 6 times 10 is 240 centimetres cubed. Okay, on to the next page. <coughs> Question 7. Find the volume of the tank shown below. What is this answer in litres? Okay, so it's a volume question. We want to find the volume of that prism. It's a rectangular prism. So we're going to use V equals LVH. The L, the B, and the H must be these three here. So times in those together in any order. 15 times 12 times 4. Times them together, we get... 720 centimetres cubed. The difference between this question and the ones on the previous page is that this question asks us to find the volume in litres. So we have found the volume in centimetres cubed. We need to be able to convert that into litres. So remember way back up on that first page where we had the formulas and we had the conversion charts, I highlighted some conversions between centimetres cubed to millimetres, millilitres cubed. Centimetres cubed, one centimetre cubed, this is what I wrote, what was written on the page, one centimetre cubed is exactly the same as one millilitre. Okay, that was on that first page. So all you need to do is go, well, 720 centimetres cubed, that's exactly the same as millilitres, so it's 720 millilitres. I've now converted it into a capacity unit. The problem is, I'm actually asked for litres, and that's why I have drawn this other diagram over here on the side. Again, I wrote that down for you on that first page, on how can I convert millilitres to litres. Well, millilitres are here. If I want to convert them to litres, 
I follow the arrow, which means I need to divide by a thousand to get to liters. So in here, if I go divide by a thousand, I will get my answer. So 720 divided by a thousand is 0 0.72 liters. Okay, so look out for those questions where you have to take your volume and turn them into capacity units. Question eight is just some practice converting units. Now, first of all, these are meant to be converting units of volume, so I'm very sorry, but I've made a couple of typing errors. Please change these centimeters to cubes. It's got a little square on there at the moment, so it should be centimeters cubed to millimeters cubed meters cubed to centimeters cubed. So they should all be powers of three because they are volume units. So if I want to convert 0 0.5 centimeters cubed to millimeters cubed, you need to use this diagram over here, which was on, the, on that first page, but I've written it down again so we don't have to keep flicking up and down. I'm at centimeters cubed here and I want to get to millimeters cubed. So follow the arrow that goes to millimeters cubed, which means I need to times by 10 cubed. Okay, so that means on your calculator, you start with the 0 0.5, that was your starting number, and you just want to times that number by 10 cubed. So there is a cube button up there just underneath your alpha, underneath your alpha button. If you press equals, that is equal to 500. The units are now millimetres cubed. Make sure that you always write the units down, please. Part B, we are starting with 0 0.007 metres cubed. So now we're at the metres cubed, and we want to go to centimetres cubed. Follow the arrow means we want to times by 100 cubed. So I'm writing my little instructions here in red. We're timesing by 100 cubed. On the calculator, you type in the number that I've highlighted in yellow, 0 0.007, and we times by 100 and press the cube button. Equal 7,000, don't forget the units, they are now centimeters cubed. <coughs> Question C, we are moving on from the cubed units into capacity units. We have milliliters and liters, kiloliters, liters, which means we need the second diagram that I've drawn over here. To get from milliliters to liters, find the milliliters on the diagram and follow the arrow to get to liters. I want to divide by 1000, that says. Okay, so all we do is take the starting number, 3,500, and I divide it by 1,000, and 3.5 litres is my answer. And for the final question, 2.7 kilolitres, so I'm starting at kilolitres, and I want to get to litres. Follow the arrow times by 1,000 this time. So write the instructions times by a thousand. So you type that in, 2.7 was our starting number, times it by 1,000 gives us 2,700 litres. Okay, so your turn to practice. On the next page here, page 47, finding the volume of a prism, just like I showed you in the example. 47, 48, and there's also exercise 6H down here as well, some of those questions.